everybody, Dave on hand here, Guts and Tools and Supplies, and once again it's time for another Tech Lab Tuesday. Well, today we're going to kind of go down the old greasy path, as it were. In today's technologically advanced engine rebuilding world that you're all a part of, you're all into these multi-angle seat cutting blades. I've done videos recently on those showing you how great it is to cut all angles simultaneously with a single carbide blade, but there is still a tremendous amount of seat grinding going out there every day. We're shipping out truckloads, well, maybe not truckloads, but order after order after order of seat grinding stones. So I know a lot of you are still out there grinding seats, even if you got them. With all this going on, these are grinding wheels. They'll load up. They'll load up with valve seat material, and they'll have to be dressed. And that's where these dressers come into play. And uh, we offer two of them. We build the original Quickway. This is a, the, the original Quickway blueprints made. Again, here we deal with foundries to get these castings poured, and then they're all machined up. And it has engraved uh, 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 degrees on the side. Uh, different heights adjustment, different diameters adjustment. I mean, this is the rock solid quick way uh, dressing stand that you guys have uh, known for many, many years. We incorporate a diamond, and, and that's a point I'll, I want to take just half a minute when it comes to these diamonds, because if we're not rotating this diamond when we're dressing, we're, we have the tendency to put a flat spot on it. If we get a flat spot on that diamond, then all we're going to do is close off these stone pores, these abrasive pores. We're going to it's actually, we're actually loading it up, and therefore we're not going to uh, dress the stone properly because it's got a flat diamond on it. So make sure you're rotating that diamond and keep a point in it all the way. We can put uh, uh, the original 437 Top Pilot in here, and the other dresser that we offer, we give you a choice of which top size pilot you want to run, whether it's a 437, whether it's a 375, whether it's a 385. Uh, one thing for sure is these pilots are uh, interchangeable. They both have a 625 bottom on them, and which is 5.8. So we can put a 385 dresser pilot in here, a 375 dresser pilot in here, or switch them depending on, again, whose stone holder, whose seat grinding system we have. So the quick way heavy duty. We uh, followed a similar design that Sue had uh, years ago with regards to this dresser, and we call this our SWD-UNI, so Universal Dresser. And again, we etched the degrees from 0 to 90. We made it expandable for the different diameter seat wheels that are out there. And uh, so this one will save you some money. This one will last you more than two or three life sides out there in the marketplace. And, and all, all these components are available uh, individually in case of accident get knocked off the counter. We hope it doesn't because there's drill holes here in all of these so you can actually bolt this down at the workstation itself. So there's a lot going on not only with the pilots but the stone holders, the different abrasives, but the technique and approach to uh, addressing this critical. Remember, no flat spots on your diamond. Rotate them, make sure you maintain a point, and that way when you come back through and dress this abrasive, you'll get a proper dress on it versus a, a flattening or a smearing. And that brings me to another thing. Let me give you a little tech tip. If you happen to have like a general purpose stone, this stone right here, and you've been grinding, everything's good, it's round, it's straight, it's, it's the correct angle, you're happy with the uh, with everything that's happened that far, and all of a sudden now you want to put a, a finishing kiss on it. Well, that's where we can adjust the speed of our dresser, and during that process, if I go at a normal speed, then I'm actually unloading this abrasive. I'm getting the angle correct. I'm exposing sharp new uh, grains of abrasive to get in there and grind that seat. However, if I speed up and go really fast across it, I can take this general purpose zone and make it more aggressive. I can make it absolutely more aggressive by speeding up that because I'm taking that diamond, I'm going across there at, at lightning speed, I'm really opening up the pores on that thing. And the opposite of that is if I take this diamond and slow dress across it, similar to that flat spot on the diamond I was referring to earlier, I'm actually closing off the grains, I'm closing off the pores, I'm closing off that bond. I can then make this stone act like a finishing stone. So again, dressing technique is important. Point on the diamond is important. Control of your speed across that abrasive is important. And you can change the characteristics 
the declining characteristics of any stone by speeding up, making it more aggressive, slowing down, lessening the aggression, and turning it into kind of a polishing or a finishing stone. So I just wanted to pass that on to you. Back to these dressers. The standard the pilots available in different sizes. All the bottoms on these are 0.625 or 5 eighths diameter. However, we still support the original Sioux uh, uh, a seat stone dresser that's out there in the marketplace, and we manufacture that here as well. This has a 600 OD from here to here, 600,000 right there on my uh, caliper. And so make sure if you're replacing your dresser pilot for an original Sioux, don't order one of these. That's 625. It'll be 25,000 is too big. But those were all 600, and you'll find that in the good city. Even with all the technology advancements, the interchangeability we have, the heavy-duty dressers or the uh, standard-duty dressers, we still have to have a way to rotate these stone holders. We can't just do it by hand. We need air. We need electricity. And to that effect, we came up with this AirCat unit that works really good. We buy this right from AirCat. We change out the drive-in on this. This gives us the right RPM we need for running these stone holders. This particular one has a hex drive on it. You can see I can get right on the top of those quick way hex drives all the way down. In case I don't want to use an electric, and I'm going to get into that in a minute, some people prefer air in their shop, and we offer that as an air tool. We also have that same thing going over here for our Sioux customers. So we put a star drive. I call it the Chevy starter drive. It looks just like the end of a early 60s or 70s uh, Chevrolet starter. It's referred to as a star drive out there in the marketplace as well. Anyway, that's the traditional suit look, and uh, we put that on there according to your ordering instructions. And again, other than the hair tool itself, everything else is made right there in Minnesota. Now, the electric guns. This is an investment on us, like these castings are. We have to look way down the pipe. Uh, keep this in put it on the show. Uh, order these castings from the foundry. You got to be months ahead uh, on the demand cycle. Same thing happens here. This is casting light aluminum injected mold casting. Well, this is sand casting here. But then we have the, the armatures and the windings and the brushes and the stator and the triggers and all this has to go in. So it's quite a complicated piece and time consuming when it comes to assembly. And of course, they need to be tested before they go out the door. But they're electric. And it's the same silhouette you've seen for many, many years. We're still proud to put that Quickway slash Goodson uh, uh, logo on the top. Each one comes with a serial tag on it as well, so we know when it was made, who did the final assembly. Kind of a good quality control we keep on our side. We can put a Sioux drive, just like this one over here. Or I can put the Quickway hex drive, like this one over here, right on this same gun. We even put an extended stick out here. I call it Uncle Dave's $10 stick. But uh, we use that for the aircraft applications. That allows us to get down in some of those Lycomans and Continentals that are out there, airplanes and airboats that are uh, propelling people both in an atmospheric situation or H2O water situation. Those Lycomans and Continentals, uh, when they're no longer in aeroplanes, go into airboats. And you see a lot of those here in the backyards of Winona, this whole. Uh, Sportsman's Paradise area in the backwaters of the Mississippi River and down the Florida Everglades as well. So uh, a lot going on with regards to uh, sea going. There's still a lot of it happening up there. One thing I don't want you guys to forget, and that's the spring right here. It's called a bounce spring. As you know, I'm a big believer in them. I grew up with bounce springs. What they do is they put pressure coming up as the stone holders are putting pressure going down. Plus, when you're done, it pops that seat grinding stone right off of the valve seat. So that allows you not to have a stop-start mark on the seat. When it's done grinding, it, you let off the pressure and it just pushes it right up. It'll also help stabilize that stone and, and help in prevention of chatter. You don't get too much chatter with a seat grinding stone like you would a carbide blade, but chatter is something we've been chasing for years, and I'm sure we'll continue to chase that for years and years and years. We also have this really cool, and it's very direct, very very simplistic in its design. And these stones, over time, and even though you got a blotter here, and on the back we've got another nylon washer behind that, sometimes these stones, because of torque and heat, they just want to glue themselves right to that. And they're a real pain in the elbow to try to 
get that stone off of there. Now, I don't want you walking over there to the uh, bench vise, clamping this precision, very expensive stone holder in there, and then wrenching on that with a pair of water pump pliers or multi-groove adjustable pliers, as I was taught in high school. We have a special tool that locks right in there on the hex. This bolts to your workbench through those two little holes right there and there, and then we can easily crack the pressure off of that stone and get it off. So it's just a handy little guy to uh, make removing and changing out those stones a little quicker and a little easier all the way around. And that's what it's all about. Uh, engine building is technically advanced. And there's a lot going on in the, in the engine shops out there. We're very proud to, to uh, be a part of your business each and every day. We want to earn it uh, the old-fashioned way with good quality variety of products, all priced reasonably and immediately available on our shelves. So if you have questions, give us a call at 1-800-533-8010 or catch us on the web at Goodson.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.